Hello, welcome back to my channel, My Classroom General English. This video is for class 11. Hello there, class 11. How are you all? Hoping you are doing perfect. Today, we are going to learn about formal invitation letters. Later on, you will be able to distinguish the letters, to get contextual meaning in the letters, and to write your own formal invitation letter. Please allow me to mix my language, English and Indonesian, just to help the beginners, okay? Thank you. Well, let's get started. Class, do you know that formal invitation letter is a part of business letters? Well, it's just one letter out of the many letters. Want to know how many? This many, and it's still counting. Don't worry, we are going to focus only on formal invitation letter. The social function is of course to invite someone to a formal particular event. The formal events are like anniversary, wedding, engagement, grand opening of a store, a formal dinner or a business dinner, fundraising, a seminar, etc. The structures consist of date, sender's name and address, recipient's name and address, opening salutation, letters body paragraphs, closing salutation, sender's signature, name, and position. In writing this letter, we are using simple present tense and future tense. There is also what we call inviting statement atau kalimat mengundang. Okay, according to our book that we are using right now, there are three letter formats that we need to learn. The first one is called full block style. In this style, all the elements are aligned to the left margin and there are no indented lines. Jadi, dalam format ini, semua bagian suratnya ada di sebelah kiri marginnya ya. Tidak ada paragraf yang menjorok. The elements are again, date, sender's name and address atau pengirim dan alamatnya, recipient's name and address atau penerima dan alamatnya, opening salutation atau salam pembuka. We are going to discuss salutation after this letter format, ya. Next is letters body atau badan surat dalam bentuk paragraf lurus tanpa bagian yang menjorok. Next is closing salutation atau salam penutup. Dan terakhir, sender's name, signature, and position, atau nama pengirim, tanda tangan, dan posisinya dalam perusahaan atau organisasi tersebut. Okay, now the second and third format. This one is called modified block style. And this third one is called semi-block style or indented. Perhatikan perbedaannya ya, secara urutan bagiannya tidak berbeda kok, tapi cara penyajiannya yang berbeda. Pada semi block style, paragrafnya terinden ya, atau menjorok ke dalam. The next thing to learn is salutation atau salam, opening and closing. Take a closer look at this table. In the first row, it says, when you know the name you invite, you must use his or her last or family name only for the opening salutation. There are two styles, by the way, British and American style. In the British style, you don't use full stop atau titik setelah Mr. atau Mrs. In the American style, you use the full stop. Kamu pakai tanda titik di versi American ya. Contohnya, jika nama yang diundang sudah diketahui yaitu Steve Rogers, maka untuk opening salutation-nya, Dear Mr. Rogers, koma, untuk British style, atau Dear Mr. Titik Rogers, koma, untuk American style. Sebagai closing salutation-nya, jika nama yang diundang sudah diketahui yaitu Your Sincerely, koma. Oke, okay. 
What if you don't have a specific recipient's or honorary's name? Well, take a look at the second row there. The opening salutation is the same for both British and American style. You simply write, Dear Sir or Madam, and then use a comma after that. The closing salutation is yours faithfully, comma. Hope you get the whole idea now. Oh, before you move on, I'd like to highlight several vocabularies that I have used just now. The other word for sender is addresser. The other words for receiver are addressee, recipient, and honorary. Please don't forget to take notes what we have discussed so far, yeah? What also important for you to know is what are mentioned in the letters body paragraphs. Apa saja ya yang kita sebutkan dalam surat undangan resmi kita? Here is the list. So according to this, you mention the organization or company name atau nama perusahaan atau organisasimu, the event, nama acaranya, the purpose of the event, tujuan dari acara itu, the invitation statement atau kalimat mengundang biasanya seperti ini. We cordially invite you to atau we'd like to invite you to atau masih banyak yang lain yang intinya kalimatnya mengundang. Next is the date and time. Next is the venue atau tempat acaranya di mana. Next is dress code, but it is not a must. Menyebutkan dress code tidak wajib dan tidak selalu ada disebutkan dalam surat ya. Next is things to bring. This is not a must either. Ini juga sama, tidak wajib ada dan tidak selalu disebutkan. Next one is hope that the guest will attend the event. Nah, ini wajib bagi yang mengundang untuk menyampaikan bahwa kehadiran orang yang kita undang itu sangat diharapkan. Bahasa penyampaiannya bervariasi. Next one is confirmation form, not always, atau formulir konfirmasi kehadiran. Form ini tidak selalu ada. Jikapun ada, maka yang mengundang biasanya menyebutkan bahwa orang yang kita undang wajib mengirimkan kembali formulir konfirmasi kehadiran yang terlampir sebelum tanggal tertentu dan biasanya akan ditolak jika terkirim lewat dari batas akhir tanggalnya. The last one is RSVP contact, not always atau nomor yang bisa dihubungi untuk konfirmasi kehadiran. Ini tidak selalu ada ya, tapi seringnya ada. The term RSVP berasal dari bahasa Prancis, kepanjangannya yaitu Réponde s'il vous plaît. Maaf ya jika pronunciation-nya keliru. RSVP means please respond. Biasanya kita diberikan nomor telepon atau sosial media atau link tertentu untuk mengkonfirmasi kehadiran kita. Ada loh Istilah RSVP regrets only, artinya konfirmasinya only untuk yang berhalangan hadir. Jadi kalian yang sekiranya bisa hadir tidak perlu menghubungi kontak itu. Kalau tulisannya hanya RSVP seperti gambar di atas, berarti itu untuk konfirmasi yang bisa dan yang tidak bisa hadir. Jadi jika kita melihat tulisan ini di surat undangan resmi, maka sebaiknya kita meresponnya secepat mungkin untuk membantu host dalam mengatur catering, jumlah kursi, dan lain-lain. Sama seperti confirmation form, RSVP juga ada batas waktunya. Jadi, jangan tersinggung ya. Jika kita merespon melewati batas waktunya atau tidak meresponnya, kita akan dianggap tidak hadir. Oke, okay, so you know what to do. Now let's put everything into practice, okay? Read the following formal invitation letter and please retell what it is about in your own words. You may use the template below if you like. I have prepared a template for you. This can be your speaking practice by yourself or with your teacher. Let me know if you have tried doing it and how it turned out for you. Di sini, kalian silakan baca contoh surat undangan resmi berikut dan coba ungkapkan kembali apa isi surat itu ya dengan bahasa Inggrismu sendiri. 
kalian boleh gunakan template berikut dan menjadikannya latihan speaking ya. Silakan dicoba dan berlatihlah speaking tanpa melihat catatan. Bisa ya? Berlatihnya boleh sendiri atau dengan gurumu. Templatenya boleh ditiru kok atau ditambah. Bagi yang sudah mencoba, tulis di comment box di bawah ya. Dan bagaimana hasilnya? I'd like to know. Your next practice is to rearrange these jumbled paragraphs into a good order. Remember, these are still put in jumble, so your task is to rearrange them. Please pause here and try it out yourself before you continue this lesson video for the correct answer. I bet this one is super easy for you, yeah? Okay, get ready. Here is the correct answer. So, what do you think about this answer? Does your answer match with mine? It should do. Getting more expert now? Okay. I'd like you to look at the following letter once again and let's complete the identification table provided next to it. The things you must find out from the letter are Letter style Style suratnya apakah full block, modified block, atau semi-block Sender Recipient Event Social function And of course, language feature tapi di sini kalian diminta mencari kalimat yang mengundangnya saja ya, atau inviting statementnya yang mana. Please pause here and try it out yourself before we discuss the answers. Alright, now let's discuss the answers. This letter is adapting the full block style, obviously. The sender is Dan Wells and family. The recipients are Mr. and Mrs. Stark. The name of the event is Engagement Ceremony. Next one is the social function, which is to invite Mr. and Mrs. Stark to an engagement ceremony. The last one is the inviting statement in the letter, which is, It is my pleasure to invite you to my youngest daughter's engagement ceremony this 28 December 2020. Class, please note that this inviting statement is not always in the first paragraph or in the first sentence. Sometimes you can find it in the second paragraph. It all actually depends on the letter. I hope you will be aware of that. Now it's time for your final practice and you really must do it because this practice will determine your mastery of our discussion today about formal invitation letter. Kegiatan yang final ini wajib kamu kerjakan ya karena untuk menentukan seberapa baik penguasaanmu terhadap materi kita hari ini. Ready? Here is what to do. Read these two different formal invitation letters and tell me how are they different using this identification table provided. Please remember class, this will be your only one classwork for today, okay? You may refer to our previous discussion if you want. Okay class, that's all about it. Please do your classwork, okay? Really looking forward to receiving everybody's submission in my Google Classroom as soon as possible. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe my channel to show that we are supporting each other. Bye for now. Please stay safe and tough.